Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's. I'm Linda Kaufman, and I'm delighted to be here with you this morning. Um, as I looked at the service this morning, um, I am really excited about this particular liturgy. So look at those words. Don't let them just wash over you. Look at them, because they're very powerful words in the liturgy this morning. So let's worship God together.
the God of life, death, and life beyond. The bears our burdens and gives us our sins. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Holy, Holy God, we encounter you in our lives and try to follow faithfully, but so, so often we get lost or turn away. We try to love our neighbors and ourselves, and even by your grace, to love our enemies and to call and empower us to do what we fail. We take the wrong path and stray from the way of your love. But forgive us, Lord, and guide us back to you. Amen.
Let us read Psalm 22 responsibly, alternating verses. For you do not despise nor pour the poor in their poverty, neither do you hide your face from them. But when they cry to you, you hear them. My praise is of you, great heaven. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek you shall praise you. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to you, and all the families of the nations shall bow before you. For yours is the royal power, O God. You rule over the nations. To you alone, all who sleep in the earth, bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, fall before you. My soul shall live for you. My descendants shall serve you. They shall be known as yours forever. They shall come and make known to the people yet unborn the same deeds that you have done.
thy words, O God, that we might love thee. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We listen to God this morning in a specific place, in a specific time, and in the context of this place and time. Here at Piney Church at St. Paul's, we hear these words on land occupied once by the Piscataway peoples, their tribe. We give thanks for their stewardship of this land and pray for their future. And here in Charles County, we acknowledge the labor of generations of African Americans building and tending farms in the community. <coughs> we pray for justice for those whose labor was and is exploited. Let us be a community of justice. When I think of my life as a Christian, I believe I am more like Peter than any other of the followers of Jesus. Full of himself, ready to speak anytime, ready to step out of the boat and walk toward Jesus, and just as likely to fail as to succeed in the works that he did. I might be a lot like that. Toward the end of last year, I heard about something called Rainbow Railroad, railroad in reference to Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. Rainbow in reference to people not safe in their home countries because of their gender identity and their sexuality. <coughs> Working with the State Department, Rainbow Railroad, is preparing to welcome folks to the United States who are not safe in their own homes. I am full of enthusiasm for this work. My business card actually says on the back of it, ask me about Rainbow Railroad. I'm part of a group of five people who got together and with every time we get five people together, a new person, a person seeking asylum is welcome to the United States. I'm really excited about this. I will bring it up on any occasion, so gosh, they gave me the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me about Rainbow Railroad at coffee hour. I'm beginning to think of myself as the CEO of Rainbow <laughs> Railroad. Okay, that's the chief enthusiasm officer. <laughs> not the executive. But boy, am I excited about this. And my life is like that. I get excited about things. I, I was one time in the Atlanta airport, and this poor, unsuspecting Starbucks worker said to me late one evening, what do you do? And I just whipped out my laptop and showed her a video. <laughs> no one is safe from my enthusiasm. <laughs> And just like Peter, who was full of enthusiasm and just said, I will always be there. But sometimes his courage ebbed. Sometimes my courage and my love for God is not as strong as other times. In this storm, as Jesus approached Peter, he Peter asked what I believe is probably one of the most important questions that whenever we hear the voice that might be the voice of God is the question we need to ask is, is that you, Jesus? Is it your voice I hear or is it someone else? Is it your voice I hear or is it my own wishes and thoughts? If it is you, Peter says, if it is you, command me to come out of the boat. Command me to try this thing that I thought two minutes ago I would never be able to do. And Jesus turns to him and simply says, come. Peter's response, he leapt out of that boat. He got 
walking on the water. He was having a great time until he noticed there was a terrible storm going on. The waves were cranking. The wind was blowing. And he looked down and he thought, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm going to die. And he calls out to Jesus. So literally within a few seconds, he's been filled with faith and hope and this real sense that God is calling him to something down to, I'm going to drown. Come on, you, you got to do something. He started to sink. He cried out, and Jesus rescued him, saved him, pulled him back, and they got in the boat. When I was in seminary, just a few days before my graduation, I began to sink. I began to realize that I wasn't really sure I'd heard God call me to be a priest. I realized that I really wanted to be ordained. I was pretty prideful. I mean, I was going to be better than you all. Well, I mean, not you all, but you know. <laughs> I mean, I was filled with this, my own self-importance, my pride, and it cut me to the heart when I realized that this was not the way I should be preparing for ordination. Not with pride, not with being full of myself. And I realized that it was not possible that someone who was as vain and prideful as I could be ordained. And I went on a walk that morning very early. I got up early before the sun was up. And I ended at the chapel at Virginia Seminary. And I knew it was over, this journey toward ordination. And I laid down in front of the altar and wept. We need to correct it, just wept. And apologized to God, I, I'm so sorry, I said. I'm so sorry for wasting all that time and that money. I, so, I feel so bad, but I, I just, I'm not. Not good enough, too much full of myself to be ordained. Something happened in that moment that's never happened since. Jesus came and knelt by my side. Jesus put his hand on my shoulder and said to me, you will hear my voice in your community. Trust that. And I did. I went ahead and got ordained. And I came to understand that the only way we are going to hear the voice of God is in community with others who are also struggling to follow God, listening, praying, being ready to tell a word to one another. I was no longer glib or easygoing about what I was doing, but really decided that I could trust my community. And I've come back to that over and over again in the almost 40 years since I was ordained, and just said, I can trust to hear God's voice when the community around me listens with me and speaks to me and sometimes even for me. So that morning changed my life. And I feel like that's part of what Peter learned in his life with Jesus. You see, I hear the voice when we're together. Oh, sometimes I hear, I get an idea or I get excited about something. But I talk to people in my community about those ideas. I can trust the wisdom of the community of Jesus. We're called to be in community, in the church, in our families, in our callings. We're never alone. How many times did you hear about, in the Bible, about James <coughs> not hearing about John? How many times did you hear about just Peter? 
Well, okay, when he was denying Jesus, he wasn't with community. How many times do you hear about Peter and James and John together up on the mountain? Simon and Peter, I mean, um, Andrew and Peter. We are always sent out two by two. We are in church for literally for God's sake. We are in church because we have to gather in community and be together so that we can hear the voice of God. I'm grateful to walk with Peter through Lent this year. You guys have such an amazing opportunity to hear about Peter week after week and see how it is that you're like Peter. See how it is that you're different from Peter. There are some of you who I'm guessing are, are, are not as impetuous and as headstrong as Peter. And thank God for that. There are some who are careful. There are some of us who would run out in front all the time until someone tugs at me and says, I don't think we're quite ready for that. Peter vows to be faithful to Jesus, and he fails. But at the end of John's Gospel, at the end of God, John's Gospel, we see again where Peter throws himself in the water. He's out fishing. And he realizes that that's Jesus on the shore. And it says he puts on his tunic and he throws himself in the water and goes to Jesus. Where Jesus asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? For each of the three times, he denied him. Peter <coughs> was impetuous. He did things that didn't always make sense. He was full of enthusiasm. He had faith, he had doubt. He is our exemplar of the, of the, the season, of the gospel this season. He walks through Lent with us, and you will be with him week after week, with him showing us the way. He is not perfect. He is profound in his willingness to follow Jesus. And he does it in community with his friends and the other followers of Jesus. My siblings in Christ, let us learn how to walk in community with Jesus. Because when we do that, we can change the world. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith on page seven in your bulletin, the affirmation of faith. Let us affirm our faith in the one who was, and is, and is to come. We believe in the God of creation, who sees possibilities where we cannot, and who holds on to hope when we are at the end of our road. We believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ, the one who died and rose victorious, and who calls us to more than we thought possible. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who joins us in life's deep waters, that says, Do not be afraid. We believe in God, who seeks after us relentlessly and persistently, a God of second chances and boundless mercy, a God who calls us by name. We believe, help our unbelief. God's streams of mercy never cease. Therefore, let us bring our whole selves to God in prayer. <clears throat> to the hearts of your church, this perfectly imperfect body of Christ, 
to sing and live your endless grace and honesty, wonder, and courage. May we, like the women of the tomb, proclaim your glory without fear. Bless the ministries of our leaders in the diocesan cycle of prayer. St. David's Church, D.C., Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Mary Ann, Mother Maria, Reverend Linda, Augustine, and all who serve in your name. Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. Turn the hearts of our leaders towards justice, integrity, and compassion. When we, like the crowd at Calvary, demand vengeance, grant us the courage to pursue peace instead. Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. Tune our hearts to the groans of our neighbors and all creation. May we, like the women at the foot of the cross, give witness to the world's party and remain steadfast in pursuit of its liberation and restoration. Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. Tune the hearts of those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit to assure them of hope, healing, and compassion. May they, like Peter, find you to be calm in the midst of the storm. Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. Tune our hearts to the wonders of our own existence. When we, like Judas, can't bear the weight of all our failings, fears, and addictions, let, let us find you to be a fount of endless mercy. Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. To the hearts of the grieving, to your echoes of comfort, may we, like all your saints, safely arrive into the fullness of your embrace. Uh, Hear our prayer. And bind our wandering hearts to thee. <laughs> Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Christ has torn down the walls separating us from God and one another, and has made us one. Therefore, let us greet one another in the spirit of peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory, and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal hope. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you and you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
turning to page 13, let us pray together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Lord of this feast, beyond measure and price, we thank you for leading us in our brokenness so that none might be lost. Liberate us now to share bread with our neighbors, each receiving from the other what we need to be ourselves. Amen. time for announcements. Um, the, uh, the only announcement I have is that Mother Maria is not here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. First of all, I'd like to say, thank Reverend Mendez for being with us. I became a fan of her at the time she held up a pair of corn as part of her sermon. And I thought, Who does that? So thank you so much for being here. And of course, today is the Wilderness Church. It's at 4 o'clock on the Port Tobacco River. So we hope that some of you can go. We'll be all of the visible churches in Charles County. Um, there's a community ministry workshop on Tuesday. It's a Zoom meeting. You'll need your bulletin because it has the, um, the, the meeting number. So um, if you might know Mother Melanie. Um, and she is going to be leading that. Um, and it's, it's going to be something that tells us about how we might be able to get involved in, in our community. So, what is that Zoom link in the bulletin for this week? It may be. It might have been in the. Maybe there's a link there. But if not, then the meeting number is right here. And for that particular one, um, I think there is no, there's no um, password needed. Then we always have, um, during Lent, we have a, another group activity. It's a Zoom meeting. It's Conklin at 8 o'clock. And it's such a peaceful little service that only takes a short amount of time, but it, it, it's profound, I think. So every other announcement that's important is in your bulletin on page, of, put my glasses on, 16. Oh, of course she's going to do what you heard. Do we have an uh, announcement from the congregation here before yes. the fifth anniversary? Birthday to anniversary. Hello. Hi. 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 My name is Rose, and this is my husband, Rosie. We are from Ghana, West Africa. Mm -hmm. And I have been here since the day. And since I got to this country, one thing I have been focusing to. I am a president. We are presbyterian. But the body of Christ is always the body of Christ. Yeah. So we always uh, will be coming together. The reason for our coming here is because our son was not feeling well. So I came early to help with him. He had cancer in October and it was just aggressive, just rushing the body. And Friday he passed on. Oh, wow. So we want to thank God. For his life, because we are Christians and we've been praying with everybody, Ghana, I mean, prayer all over. And God has decided. So he is at peace now. And we want to thank God with $100 for the children's pack that we give. So that is why we want to see. So I want to thank God for, for his life and everything he has done for us throughout this very short term. We appreciate everything. What is your son's first name? Wilhelm. Wilhelm? Yes. Wilhelm Pesson. Let's pray he for him right now. He has a wife and a son. Mm -hmm. So let us pray for Wilhelm. Gracious God, you know each of us by name. You formed us in your image and you love us. So we offer to you your child Wilhelm that you would care for him, that even at the grave, we sing your glory and we give thanks for his parents. We pray for all those who mourn and ask that you would bless them even in this time of sorrow. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for your donation to our back back program. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, milestone blessings. Any birthdays? <coughs> Anniversaries? Yeah. Oh, come on up. You have to come home again. You have to come, yeah, you have to come up. That's <laughs> how you get your steps. <laughs> so, where is my son? I just know you just stay right here. Oh, <laughs> and we're going to pray together. Watch over your child through, O oh Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may your peace, which passes all understanding, Abide all the days of his lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And now, may the God who dances in creation, who embraces us with human love, who shakes our lives like thunder, bless us and drive us out from this place to fill the world with justice. The blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.